Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel and it's your boy Barista Andrea. Right beside me, it's the most tallest tower that you'll ever find in a coffee shop. I Many of you might call it the Yama Tower just because it's the most common company that makes these towers or the cold brew towers. But today I've decided to come with a Tiamo brand or the Tiamo company brand, which also makes these towers. Like you see it, it's a tower, it's long. It's, it's like I think three feet tall. Like you see, it has different segments, all different vessels. We have the top vessel, the middle vessel, the steel under the same section. We have two vessels in the middle and the last vessel. So it holds one, two, three, and four vessels. Each vessel has a name and each vessel has a purpose as, as to why it was arranged in this format. So and in breaking them off, the top we have the top baker, we have the middle baker, the coil ring, like you see it, it's a glass coil ring. Then we have the bottom baker. So beginning with the top part, like we see here, I call it the water tank just because it holds a mixture of water and ice, but still when ice dissolves, it turns into water. Like you see, it holds 3,000 mils or three liters. Uh, let me just twist it a little bit. It holds 3,000 mils of water. Unlike you see at the bottom of this tank, it has a tap here. So this tap basically regulates the flow of the water into the middle baker. So with this middle baker, I normally call it the coffee hooper. Like you see, this vessel here holds coffee grounds and like you see with the middle baker it has a filter it's a metallic filter let me just remove it a little bit so basically this metallic filter helps us uh, separate the coffee grounds from the liquid whereby it allows the liquid to pass through the what this channel or this terminal into our glass coil and at the end of the middle baker we have a plastic rubber here that helps us or directs water into our glass ring basically this glass rings out the coffee to flowing slowly into the bottom baker this bottom baker holds the final product that you are going to brew like you see it also ends with a 3000 mils the tank holds 3000 mils that means that uh, your end product has to be 3000 mils so after knowing the different parts of this tower like you see this is made of wood i forgot to say that this is made of wood and others are glass so after knowing the different parts of this tower the next thing is to know the different techniques on how you can easily brew your cold cup or your cold coffee out of this tower like you know we baristas have different techniques or different methods through which we brew our coffee like you see this machine it uses extraction we have a pour over method we have a infusion method so when it comes to brewing this coffee its process is commonly known or its process is known as the slow infusion process the higher the flow of the water the quicker the brew the lesser the flow of water the longer it takes to brew your coffee. But remember, while brewing this coffee, it's going to take between 8 to 12 hours. That is roughly one day. So this tower basically uses the slow infusion process. When I talk about slow infusion process, what do I mean? It being the fact that we're using cold water, it's going to take a very slow pace to infuse the coffee or to lease out the gases from the coffee due to the coldness of the water. The temperatures of the water are as low as, let me say, 10 uh, 9 to 10 degrees or 9 to 15 degrees Celsius. So they are going to be very, very low. So while pouring water into a vessel, like you see, it has, it has readings or numbers. It has 600 mils, 1,200, 1,800, 2,400, and 3,000. Like you see, that means in between, each, uh, in between each numbers, there is a difference of 600 mils. But as a barista, I can easily try out brewing from 1,000 liters or 2,000 liters or 3,000 liters. But I have to stop, stop on 3,000 liters. So when I'm, uh, when I'm pouring my water, I'll pour water up to 1,800. Then I fill it with ice up to 3,000 mils. This step is going to help us regulate the water flow. It can either be high or slow. But remember, the slower, the perfect brew. The quicker still it will be perfect depending on your test but remember there is a variance or there is a difference between the seconds but for a perfect brew while releasing our water you have to release 40 drops in one minute that means four drips in six seconds so when it comes to our coffee it depends you can try out uh, it depends you can try out different brands but uh, normally uh, when it comes to the when it comes to this cold brew, just in case you want to serve your customers perfectly, I would recommend one to have the V60, I think uh, the, it's a kosher salt, uh, medium to medium. So I would recommend one to use the V60 grain. But just in case you don't understand the V60, still you can use the salt, uh, table salt, kosher grain. 
that will give you a perfect outcome. So when it comes to the water and the coffee ratio, that comes to a 1 to 5, 1 to 5 ratio, whereby 1 gram of coffee has to attain 5 grams of water. 1 gram of coffee with 5 grams of water. That necessarily doesn't mean that you can't use a, a 1 gram with a 10 grams or 1 gram with 7 grams, but remember it starts from 5, you can take it upwards. It's all about you to try out any different kind that you would love, which your customer will also love. When it comes to the grains still, you can also try out different uh, grains. You can try out the Chemix grain, you can try out the Europress, you can try out the Espresso, and you easily see an outcome. Remember here, we are here to teach you the basics. Then you can easily also try out different measures or different steps on how you can easily brew better tasting coffee which your customers will like. So after understanding the ratio of the water, what is next? After inserting my coffee, I'll level it by shaking it. It stands on a flat surface. Then I'm going to get a paper filter which I'm going to place on the coffee grounds. And that paper filter has to be pre-wetted before you sit it on, onto your coffee. So as we go on, after releasing our water from the upper baker, our water is going to slightly flow into the coffee grounds. It will take roughly 30 minutes to saturate in some parts of the coffee. You see some parts are dry, some parts are what? Parts are wet. So you just have to be very, very careful leveling your coffee. And the reason as to why we put a paper filter, once you release your water without a paper filter, the water is going to entrench or it's going to go direct through the coffee, hence come into your glass ring. So to avoid that, remember that won't allow water to access all the parts of the what? Of the coffee. So to eliminate off all that, that's when we bring in our paper filter to place it on top of the coffee so that it helps splash ashes off the water. It's going to the different parts of the coffee, also entrenching the middle baker. When your water has reached around uh, uh, 2,700, we shall start seeing some driplets into the coil. As driplets come into the coil, it won't directly go into the bottom baker. It will just round off slowly into the bottom baker where our final product is going to be. And remember, while brewing this coffee, don't rush. Give it its own time. Even if it's 12 hours and you found that it has not yet finalized, kindly give it its own time. Don't rush it. Because remember, through our infusion process, once you get to stop the water, we shall have, let me say, uh, 1,800 mils left. So all the infused coffee that is extracted through will be the strongest coffee into your bottom baker. Okay. And once you serve off that coffee, remember you are serving off the strongest coffee that is going to help you dilute the water that is left here. So within that infusion process, the first liquid that goes in is the strongest. So when it also comes to the coffee, I will recommend you to use the dark roast coffee. Reason being that once you use a light coffee, it is going to array, uh, it's going to bring in much acidity, hence loosening most of the fruit notes, uh, the different aromas, and the different tests. So to eliminate all that and you want to enjoy your cold brew, I would recommend you to use the dark roast. Remember the dark roast, however much it has the bitter element, it's going to extract out the most sweetest taste, the different beautiful flavors that you leave that you live never to regret for taking this cold brew. Once you have our final product after 12 hours, don't forget to rush it to a store that has a room temperature or your fridge so that it ages, it gets to age like you see wine. People who ferment wine, they give it time to age. Remember, the more it ages, the better or the sweeter it becomes. That's why you see we have a difference between dry wines and sweet wines or semi-sweet semi wines. That's all because of the period given to it to age. That's why I would advise one to keep it for five days, two, five to seven days, which will be good to test or better to serve to your customer. So what we do as baristas, we leave the shift as our process is already commencing. By the time you come back the next day, you'll find that your brew is finished. So all after that you've learned in this video, in just a second, I am going to play for you a very quick video or how he makes his cold brew out of this tower.